Today on Midwest Ghost Center's Dark Matter Podcast, we're talking about UFOs. Welcome to another edition of Midwest Ghost Center's Dark Matter Podcast. I'm John, Chris, Tyler, Bobby, Dustin, the uh, crew from Midwest Ghost Center's here today for the podcast. Yes, and if you want to get in touch with us, it's mwghostcenters.com. You can look through some of the uh, investigations we've done, and you can even uh, get in touch with us right there. A lot of people have been lately. Um, we've got a lot of uh, requests for investigations. We're looking through those. We've got several of them booked. I know one of the ones we've talked about doing for a while is one that would probably be good to do this fall. We were going to do it this summer. One of the... Um, Obstacles we talked about doing it in the summer is the bugs, and that is the uh, outdoor investigation at that uh, cemetery that we've been to before. So we we could do that, in, you know, this fall sometime. Maybe it'd be a little quieter out there. I don't know. Today we wanted to talk about. Well, first of all, we should preface this by saying last week when we were here at Pythian Castle, a lot of activity happened during the podcast. That may happen again, regardless of what our topic is. We may have to pause at some point along the way and address that as we go. But uh, today we wanted to talk a little bit about one of the things that we like to talk about. One of the things we like to talk about a lot is UFOs. I know on our older podcast that we used to do from the radio station, we did several UFO podcasts, and we've not done one of those from here that I can remember. I mean, you know, you're in Pythian Castle, which is a very, you know, well-known paranormal paranormal location. I mean, it's not known for aliens landing on the roof. So, I mean, <laughs> our, our, you know, our... Our t- subject matter is tend to, to rotate around that kind of stuff, but we do. Uh, we're by no means experts, but uh, but we do know you know a little bit about the UFO stuff too. And we've talked about it, like I said, on our old podcast a lot. Uh, we thought we'd kind of tip uh, uh, dip our toe into that a little bit today, since we haven't done one in a while. And I actually watched a show last night. I'm trying to remember what, what it was called. I can't remember what it was called. I can't even remember where I finally because I looked through Amazon Prime, I looked through Apple TV, and I looked through Netflix. And I even looked through Discovery Channel. I can't remember where I finally landed on this one, but it was um, it was a really good uh, paranormal or a uh, UFO documentary, and they they went to they went all over the place. Now, not all governments are the way the United States and some of the bigger you know UK and some of the bigger you know countries governments are, or at least have been, where they've been quite secretive and protective of UFO claims and stuff like that, especially when those claims come from their own military personnel. A country that's not like that at all is Chile. Now, I didn't know this until I was watching this documentary, but they were investigating uh, UFO sightings over the jungles of Chile. And as they got to looking into it more, now these were former, uh, these were former, you know, military personnel. There, one was a former FBI agent. One was, I don't even remember what, but they were all very high ranking. One was an astrophysicist. They weren't just dudes. They were actually people with some credentials. And one of the things that they were, wanted to do was to get into this. I cannot remember now the name of the, uh, of the branch of government. But they have the, in Chile, their government has its own branch of government set aside to specifically study UFO phenomena. That's all they do. And they wanted to be able to get in there and to look at some of the files. And you know, they were as they were talking about doing this, they were like, you know, there's no way you know, that'd be like getting into the Pentagon. And they got right in. The, they had a military guy with them, and uh, he he helped them you know, find the files that they were looking for and went through them. But anyway, while they were in Chile, they, they, they got into this. I can look it up here in a minute what this branch of government is called. And they were able to look through all these. And the, and the uh, military, you know, personnel that was with them was talking openly about that. You know, talking openly about how, yeah, we study UFOs. They, we've been studying them for years. Um, what, what has caused this huge <clears throat> shift, not just in the United States, but... Apparently, uh, across other countries as, as well. You know, when I don't know, y- you go back in time into the uh, you know nineteen nineteen thirties, and obviously with with World War, I get that. I get why that the, right. the, the, the government's got to be like really clamped down on anything. I understand right, that you're, you're, you have enemies. Yeah, you know, you've got. Is that you? Oh, that was the old that, man. That ye. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> no, it was that was over here, old man. Did it sound like what I just did? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have to maybe listen maybe back it was to that, me. too. Well, if it was me, I don't, I'm not aware of it. So back then, like, they couldn't be sure of whether that thing wasn't Russia's or China's. Or, right. Well, but yeah. now we can be pretty certain that the thing that just disappeared at Look, it's not, the blink of an eye was not Russia's or China's. Right. It, I, I never question why the government kept it, treated it the way it did when you're in the Cold War. Right. The bigger no, that the makes bigger, sense to me. The bigger question is why are they suddenly not doing that? That's anymore? exactly. See, that's that's my whole point. The yeah. only thing I can think of is like trying to soften us up for something. Yeah. That's well, a, I mean, that's my natural inclination is to think they're trying I, to soften. I'm us not up a conspiracy me person. Either at all. I don't really buy into like a lot of them. There are some that have some like merit, I think. But 
it really does feel like, if you look at it over the past 30, 40, 50 years, that they are slow, like trickle, trickling us stuff. Like every now, I think it was two or three weeks ago, they released the new, um, the, the, the fourth round of the Black Vault, like the internal mm -hmm. emails from mm -hmm. NASA. So you can see like for, inter it used to be for internal eyes only, the how, like they were preparing their guys for interview questions, like preparing them. Like, how are you going to answer it when the media asks you this? Like, what is going to be our kind of boilerplate response? And that was one of the things that I learned on this documentary last night is the United States, and you guys may have heard of this, had a program in place for many years, uh, for almost a decade, called uh, AATIP, ATIP. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. ATIP, yeah. the Advanced yeah. Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Yeah. It's a pretty much a fancy way of saying we study UFOs. Um, but they wouldn't fund them. That's why it's not here anymore. Right. Yeah. So all of that stuff from ATIP has been declassified well not all of it a lot of it's, a lot of it's redacted but I mean you can still add, I mean a lot of this this uh, information is now available that like when you have commanders of um, fleet commanders of battleships yeah. coming out yeah and saying oh no no we we this is what happened like we saw it we scrambled to it uh, it, it disappeared and reappeared at our location that we was kept secret from, from everyone I'm talking about like commander for uh, David Fravor is that yes. his name mm -hmm. um, his account is like kind of opened the floodgates, I think. Cause and it seems like a lot of times, it seems like a lot of times the military seem to, their sightings and claims seem to rotate around the Tic Tac. Not always, but uh, they, well, yeah. a lot of them, especially over water, are the Tic Tac-shaped uh, UFOs. The, 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 the guy I watched last night, that's what he talked about a lot. And he said he was able to visually, um, I guess their radar is able to measure the size. Okay, I was getting ready to say, the Nimitz is like, it's known for its like radar tech. There was like one or two battleships like it. The, the the Nimitz was the name of the ship that was that saw this thing. This is like the best radar we have yeah, in the United and, States military. And he like, said their radar was able to, from tip to tip, say it was forty seven feet long. That's pretty big. Feet that's long. pretty big tic tac. Pretty big tic -tac. Uh, no wings, no windows, no propulsion system visible. But it was moving. I got to I got to look up again to make sure I'm not wrong. The video is the most amazing thing I think I've ever seen. I'm also amazed that the military hasn't tried to shoot them down. Oh well, we are not sure they haven't. I'm sure there's been times where they could. You know. See the the thing with the tic tac was like. They couldn't even get a lock on it. Like, they couldn't lock their sensors on it. So you can't shoot it. You could blind shoot it. But that's what Commander Fravor was talking about. He's like, they were scrambling our our stuff, which is in and of itself an act of war. Right. Like, if that happened, if we were trying to get a lock on a Russian jet in our airspace and it scrambled our stuff, we're at war now. Like, n now you're, at, you're officially at war. Um, so the fact that this thing was doing that, like, actively... It always seems like it's kind of playing with them, too. Yeah. I always get that impression. Like, it's just messing around. And I'm looking here, trying to figure out, because I because they had the... Uh, you know, the, if you're doing research on... Oh, on, yeah, the Nimitz. Uh, I another, see that right here. Another society, another culture. Let's say that you are an alien deal. You would send... you. It wouldn't be out of the question to send a probe down to see... Let's see what the technology they have yeah, can do. Yeah. I mean, Even that, during, like, the Vietnam War, there were a lot of... Reports that you don't hear about much now that back then probably seemed pretty credible. It was just coming from ground guys and the Marines in boats or whatever, like right. just seeing weird stuff in the sky. Pilots reported some stuff. I can't find the specific speed they said that they detected it moving, but I know the two military guys they were interviewing and the um, the astrophysicist said at that speed, human organs would turn into Oh, there's jelly. zero question that... This the tic tac. It disappeared and reappeared like I forgot how many hundreds, of hundreds miles of miles in, in a second, uh, instantaneously, in a split second. Yeah, which you know is obviously impossible. If there's a human being in there. They are now mush against the wall. Yeah, like the, you can't do that. And he well, actually, he some actually sort of quoted something uh, on the exterior. Well, and that's where you get into the to the crazy stuff because there is like an idea of like it being like some kind of like a gravity defying right. thing. Right, you would almost have to do that. Yeah. To keep whatever's inside alive. And to well, go and that that's, fast. That's what, whenever we talked on the old podcast podcast about Bob Lazar at that time, remember he was talking about, you know, whether you believe him, some people believe him, some people don't. But if you do believe him, his job was to reverse engineer the propulsion system, the, the UFO that he was examining. And he said their propulsion system was based on, what is that that element? Oh, I forgot already. I forgot. It's a yeah. it's an element that, that that's not available on Earth? or No, no, we, I think we made it. 
we just can't make it stable. Oh, that's, that's right. right. We can't stabilize we can't, it. Yes. We can't make it with the with the correct like. But he yeah. said it was a combination of that and like a anti anti matter anti gravity something. I don't see. Know. As I, I want to know it's on the periodic table. It is. You're right because we talked about that. I think the thing is that that certain element wasn't there at the time, but we knew of its existence. Like we knew that it was theoretically possible that that element could exist. But we hadn't found it in nature. Yet. Element right. one fifteen. One fifteen. Mm-hmm. For is... something to be on radar at one minute and then disappear and reappear hundreds of miles away in a second, you have to be able to defy inertia. You know, it's, it really it reminds me a lot of the uh, movie Independence Day, and I know that we've all seen that movie. But remember when they're on Air Force One? They've just they've just blown out of uh, DC and the. Uh, the guy uh, says uh, to, to the president, "Hey, we gotta, we've got to go to Area 51. That's where you guys have got all these aliens. You guys have been studying everything for years and years and years." And he says, "Don't you get it? We don't really do that." And then there's another general in the military who says, uh, "Well, sir, that's not exactly yeah. true." <laughs> they give him some plausible deniability yeah. there, um, and there may be something to that too. I was just reading about the uh, Element 115. I know it's not the most interesting part of the story, but they're able to uh, they're able to make Element 115, but it only exists for a fraction of a second, right. then decays into a different element. That's what it is. Yeah, I want to believe Bob. I want to believe Lazar. I, He's very believable and has nothing to gain. The, there's um, just it, the more you look into it, the more little. Anytime you hear about like something about like his his marital problems, or right. the things he was going through at the time, there's a whole other rabbit yes. hole there. But then you got to wonder like, this is where you get the tinfoil hat on, and you're like, okay, well, if you want to discredit somebody, right, then these are the kind of rumors you'd put out in the general public. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about Bob Lazar, but there, I've mentioned this one time before. We talked about this kind of stuff on here, but there was a documentary I watched it on YouTube. I think of this guy who was a I think he was a paleontologist or he's some kind of historian, but he wanted to follow the trail of the 49ers in the Southwest and it happened to go right through area 51 where he wanted to go. And this guy tried for like 10 years to get clearance just to go look at the ground inside the base. This dude was a bleeding heart, like historian. That's all he wanted to do. So they wouldn't let him obviously. So he snuck in and went oh, through the base. That. He you went, sh- you sent this video of he that army crawled through the base. Yeah. And made it out undetected. I mean, he could have been shot and killed. He, yes. could have, he would have been shot and killed. If the they signs found are him. very clear. You will be shot. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a secret military base. But he got in and out. And uh, I think at the end, he ended, he ends up dying from like radiation poisoning. I remember you sent us that story a long time ago about a guy who made it in, it's then so back good. out of, of Groom Lake. It's so good. He talks about... I don't know if this was him or somebody else who was talking about this, but apparently one of them were on Groom Lake at night and he could feel vibrations from under the ground and like lights oh, on, on, on the Groom Lake. Lots like the going on. Salt yeah. on there, yeah. And I know there have been people who've snuck in not that far, but snuck in little ways and taken enough soil samples to say that it's very highly, you know, radioactive. And that was a test site over there. Somewhere. I was getting ready to say. True, but like, how long, how long would that? That would still be active, wouldn't it? I mean, oh lord, yeah, oh millions, millions, yeah. millions For, of years. It'll be radio. Any any test site will be radioactive long before we're gone, like or long after we're gone. I mean, it depends on the on the on the specific. You know, if we're talking, you know, it depends on what uh, uh, element we're talking. Also about. Also depends on how like the elevation. Well, yeah, but it won't. Right. right. What I mean is, you'll always detect radiation sure. of some. Like, the half life of some at, of that stuff is, you know, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of, of thousands, years. Yeah. yeah, it will never be at like normal levels again. Like you're crawling through that dirt, you're crawling. You're going to be getting more radiation. Than I mean, you still got to suit up to get in Chernobyl. It's you're probably supposed like to. at least thirty bananas worth. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I the the uh, the the uh, show I was watching about last night. The the interesting thing to take away from it. Number one was this uh, this AATIP A tip that I'd never heard of. If I had, I've forgotten. And then secondly, that not all governments are like you know the the bigger you know superpower type governments where they are, have been at least historically uh, keeping the uh, information away from you know the the public. But it does seem like we were talking about earlier. There's like a like a trickle in thing happening now where it's pretty normal for even on your your local nightly news, even if it's presented in a lighthearted manner, to show a UFO video that was captured or to. Say Say, you know, the newly declassified video from a from a F-15 or whatever. How did the uh, other countries of the world, I mean, I, I didn't know that Chile was this way. What about like some of the European countries uh, or, or any of the other nations? Is anybody else, did they have 
uh, lots of, of UFO sightings. Is that more of a U.S. thing to see? Or? That's a really good segue, John. Yeah, he's segueing into what I was telling you about okay. earlier, that article that Tyler just shared Oh, with yeah. We, I, I, let's um, go. You, you know more. I mean, I Not really, dude. Don't put me on the spot like that. I don't really know much, much about this at all. Well, you um, know more than I do for sure because you just, I mean, we just got the article just I just right like before the, we started. I like the picture and the story of the article. The picture is nuts. I mean, you can see the it's brand structure. New. It's brand new. Like, it just got declassified from... We from always talk about, you know, it, it's one world and everything else. I mean, there's there's all kinds of media outlets in, in other countries around the world. There's, everybody's got cameras now. And, and how, what, what about some of the other stuff around the world? I don't know. All, all I can add to that specific conversation before we get into this uh, story that these guys were talking about is that I, I saw a graph that showed UFO sightings since 2007. And they, I mean, obviously that's going to be because we now all have a very decent, very good phone in our hip pocket at all times. Uh, or I mean, camera uh, in our hip pocket at all times. Uh, but from 2007 to today, they've like, you know, quadrupled or more uh, the, the sightings and the uh, available video footage. That's why it always confuses me when people say, well, if UFOs are real, why aren't we seeing more video? It's like, aren't you? I am. I'm seeing a ton more now than I did, you know, in, in 1998. Your story you've got there, Dustin, what was the name of that? Is it named after the area where it occurred? I had it pulled up here. The one with the declassified photo from oh, 1970. Cal, See, Calvin. To me, the, Calvin, the thing yeah. that I find Calvin. most interesting is the fact that the, a lot of the photos we're now seeing are from the 70s. They're from the 80s. Yeah, They're from other in, times. In this case, uh, this one was just recently, I guess, declassified. So it, it's it's being called the, the most spectacular UFO photo ever captured. Every headline I look at says that. Uh, world's best, um, all that. It, it, after 30, it was sealed shut in MI6 files for 32 years. And it's just been released. Like, this was uh, August 12th. Uh, didn't it only get released because they went to the original photographer and got the photo from him? Yeah, he said, um, his first thing he said when they came up to him, I don't remember, it's somewhere buried in the articles, he was like, I've been waiting for like 35 years for someone to come ask me about this, is what he said. So these were on the Scottish Islands, um, is that right? Yes, yes, right yeah, yes right. you are. Um, um, it was two guys, they were, they were chefs okay, no, at a hotel. Was, this wasn't um, in the 70s, though, if I'm looking at the right one. It was in August of 1990. 1990 okay. is when this was, yeah. I saw um, that, too. Because when did they declassify that picture? Because this article I'm looking at is from 2020, and he's talking. this guy's talking about, uh, the headline is, I've seen top secret photos of, is it Calvine or Calvin? Either it's way. Either way, I don't Calvin know. UFO sighting that left me shell-shocked, and this is a military guy. Well, that, he said top secret. It probably wasn't declassified yet. Like, this is like when it was, like, actually, like, Sent out to the general public. That's when, as, I was, as far as I know, this just got. That's what I'm thinking. So this is from October 2020, and he's saying these photos exist, and now they've been declassified. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes uh, sense because uh, this guy's given an account of having seen the photos and kind of going over what he saw. And that photo we had pulled up earlier was the recreation they drew based on his right. based description. on his description. Yeah, of, that makes oh, sense now. The source of the photo. Um, and they got pretty damn close too to the real photograph. Um, aside from you know the greeny, the quality. real photograph. What makes it really um, good is that you see the intercepting jet. Yeah, you see it right there behind uh, it, and so you kind of get a little bit of a scale. And if anybody's wanting to thing. look up the photo we're talking about, it's C A L V I N E U F O. It pops up right you will, away. You will see it. If I remember right, that jet was there specifically to intercept whatever that was. Well, it was, well, it was there to intercept Russian. Because yes. oh yeah 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 and they thought that that was the, Calvin's rural isn't it that's rural Scotland it's yes mm -hmm. farmland okay. yeah uh, but, apparently there were six photographs taken he just kept snapping he just kept that's that's the one that's the best in focus you got to keep in mind this guy was hiding in a bush he was terrified um so yeah he he said he took like five or six all of them were like blurry and and really motion blurred except for that one that's and, the one that. Got focused. It's interesting because I'm reading this article that's now almost three years old from a guy, you know, talking about that these ex photos exist and that he's seen them and he describes them exactly like they actually look. So you want me to just go through the story real quick? Yeah, go for it. So there's two guys. Um, they were chefs at a hotel and it was the weekend, I guess. So they were going to drive about 13 miles away to a spot where they could go walking and hiking and just kind of relax for the weekend. And they hadn't gone far down the road when uh, one of them noticed a they describe it as a huge, solid, diamond-shaped object about 100 feet long, is what they would guess. And they've since looked at this and looked at the picture, because you can use the scale of the jet, because yep. we know how big the jet is, sure. and then you can use about an estimate how far you are um, away from this thing, and then you could get a pretty good idea how big this thing is. Yeah. Um, and it 
comes out to about 100 feet long, about the size of a football field. That's like big. This thing and the cool thing about it is you can see the structure of the of it, too. Yeah, it's a very, like, it does not look like a plane or a jet that's put together with screws and pieces. It's yeah. a solid thing. It's like it was 3D printed. It's this huge one. It's one thing. So they hadn't gone far when they noticed it. They were, of course, terrified, as anybody would be, because you don't see something like that in the sky they they hid in some bushes they pulled the car over hid in some bushes and started looking up at it one of them had a camera with him they were going hiking they were going to take pictures um he started snapping photos above him like i said minutes later they said about two or three minutes later which is pretty quick honestly they heard the scream of a jet aircraft um and that's when they saw that the um the fighters were intercepting there was actually two fighters that were there only one of them's in the frame of the photo um so these guys were out there in the middle of nowhere giant 100 foot long ufo above them and then all of a sudden two fighter aircrafts are, are intercepting it and this one, uh, you can see the fighter that is in frame is pretty damn close too. yeah uh, the jet came back and circled it so they knew that he had seen it too because this jet does what commander forever did uh what he was talking about he just it's a normal thing you do when you're seeing when you're checking something out whether it's an airplane or a jet or a uap or ufo you you circle it then you can if you need to engage it you can just engage it right so he's He's circling this thing. Eventually, the two men stuck their camera out, blah, blah, blah. We already know about that. And then uh, as the jet started to actually make an active, like they call it an active pattern, like he was engaging it, like he was going to start dipping down and going towards the UFO, this thing just shot up in the blink of an eye is the way they described it. It was there, then it was gone. Uh, shot straight up, and I snapped. I snapped. Oh. <laughs> uh, he shot straight up and, and disappeared up into the sky, and they never saw it again. And the best footage, video footage I've ever seen of that actually occurring happened with a UFO that was video uh, over Israel. Over Israel, right? I've seen that one. That's over, crazy. Yeah, that was absolutely insane. They have multiple angles of that one too. That light dips down right above whatever that religious building is. It's I over don't the steeple know. of some kind. Over of, the you, steeple you see of a religious religious building. or a state building. And these guys are like up on a cliff, and they're you know this thing catches their eye, and they see this light dip down. And I mean, it zips away at a speed. That's not even Didn't imaginable. Did so, it happen in DC once too? I don't. There was remember. a pyramid UFO um, shaped like a pyramid, well, not a triangle, there, but a there, pyramid. There was a fleet of UFOs that flew over the White House. Yeah, in, that's the one I'm thinking the, of in the. Uh, 50s? 50s. A fleet of them. Like, it was a whole thing. They didn't even have time it was to on, scramble. Now, jets. back then, it was on the nightly news once, and no one ever thought of it again. I'm surprised it was on the nightly news at all. Uh, can you imagine if there was a fleet of unidentified crafts flying over the, uh, the White House today? Yeah. That would be a bigger deal, right? Like, yes. You can't hide something like that because people were out in the streets that, looking at it. I, I am amazed that that made the news at all. I am, too. Well, especially during that time period. When it's a mass sighting like that, there's been uh, mass sightings are my favorite. Because they're undisputable. Yeah, that's why I always watch the Phoenix Lights stuff over and over because I can't uh, remember how the, many The most interesting part of the story I actually didn't get to is that they, they knew they had just saw a UFO. Because these guys, obviously, that's not something you see every day. So they went to, immediately went to the news. Um, the, the Daily Record, one of Scotland's leading newspapers. Uh, the story never was printed, and the paper passed the pictures to the Ministry of Defense. Photographs vanished, and the two young chefs were never heard from. Like, they just went completely silent, didn't say a word about it. Until now, of course. And now that this is declassified, uh, one journalist found one of the guys, one of the chefs, and like that's what he said. I said it earlier. He was like, I've been waiting to talk about this for 35 years. Can you imagine? Like, One of the guys who took the picture said that? Yeah. Uh, who, yeah. who, who encouraged their silence, I guess, was... Well, I'm the Ministry of Defense, I'm sure. Like um, The people who sealed the documents, Like it was top secret at that point. They, they put it under the guise of national defense. Cause, and you can understand why, because they didn't know what this thing was. That's a really good photo. That's crazy. Um, crazy. Crazy story, too. Like I'm also shocked that our cameras weren't better than that in 1990. I mean, that's a good picture. I mean, it's a it's a really good picture. But I thought when we first pulled it up, that was like from the 70s. Mm. Well, it depends. Well, you got to keep in mind, it was in 1990. Yeah, the camera the itself was probably from the early 80s. True. Like, that's true. Because they were taking this on a, on a camera, yeah, not a phone. it was just one of their even. personal cameras. Yeah. That, um, so, yeah, if you want to look that up, you can look it up. It's uh, Calvine. I don't know how they, they say the name of the town. It's in Scotland. Calvine or Calvine, uh, C-A-L. V I N E, and you can see the the picture we're talking about right there. Um, um, the dude who crawled through area supposedly crawled through Area Fifty One. His name was Jerry Freeman, and he was investigating the Death Valley Forty Niners Trail. Well, There's a risked, Wikipedia article. He on risked that. life and limb for that story because I mean, most people once you hit, you know. Well, he did. He died from this. 
uh, due to radiation. Yeah, I, but I think but so. I'm saying most people. Oh my goodness, I I forgot about the. I'm sorry, I forgot about the rest of this. Um, it was a retired RAF officer who had kept the photo, a secret copy of the photo. This guy did apparently. He was willing to talk to the journalist. And he'd broken protocol that day and stashed a copy of the image. That's that's crazy. So he, t- he took he, a personal copy? Yeah, he kept the secret copy in his desk for 32 years. And I'm assuming that he probably waited for it to be declassified before talking about it. I don't know. I'm trying to look. He's the one who said, I've been waiting for someone to, to, to ask questions. So it wasn't story. the guys who took no, the no, picture? No, no, no. It was, it was, the, it was the retired RAF officer um, who was the first one to talk to the guy that day. It's uh, interesting to have a story like that be declassified here in 2022 and to look back and read an article from 2020 where a guy is swearing that it exists and is describing the you know the picture almost in perfect detail to what we can see now that it has been declassified. So yeah, that's a, man, that's a, that's a good... I'm going to look that up here real quick. That's a really good... Uh, story so that's uh i mean some of these stories i'm looking up on this are just like 10 hours old so this is really new yeah at least the scottish government i mean you know over there (laughs) the uh you know in in you know united states europe and the bigger countries like that at least they're all kind of engaging in the same behavior of a slow trickle of uh declassifying some of this stuff that you would have swore in the 80s they would never ever release this guy spent 15 years in the military, this um, officer who, who finally talked about this thing. And I'm trying to figure out who the guy was who was saying that he had seen the pictures. And, I, and the one that I was talking about just a second ago that described them, I don't know. But they, there's zoomed in pictures of that thing, and it is nuts. I wish they had a video of, the, of it shooting straight up in the air like that. Because there are, I know that picture we showed earlier was like a mock-up of what the guy would remember, but there's also enhanced photos, too, that are really good. I mean, you could, you're right, Dustin, there's like no... There's no rivets, or it's like the, the 3D printed would be about the best. You can't screw together something that can fly through no, space huh. like that. Like, it would have to be a solid piece, and that's what it kind of seems like we're looking at here. It's hard to tell. I mean, we're, we're by no means experts, but, I mean, you know, even with our, our highest, you know, with stealth or whatever our highest, you know, tech aircraft is, it's put together. It's not, you know, put together and it's not printed out in one chunk, is it? No. I wouldn't think so. No. Um, no, we don't have anything like that. Like, our, our 3D printing isn't there yet. That's the future, though. That's what will happen. Like whenever we get a good handle on it and can like mass produce these, like because it makes a you know a much better structure. It's more sound. Well, it would have to be. Yeah, to go to these speeds that we're talking about with these, you know, with these things, it would have to be one solid piece. I thought you were going to say no, something. No, no, I just. <laughs> I just can't wrap my mind around all that. Yeah, it's a lot to think about. And it seems like every day, or at least every week, there's a new, there's something new. Oh, it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy because I do. I watch for this stuff. I watch for UFO news because, like you said, it's more acceptable to the general public than what we do on a on a day to day basis. And if you just type, yeah, if you just type, it is. But there's more shows about what we do than there is about UFOs. Yeah, that's true too. Well, this is easier, you know. Well, well, this is... But I mean, I'm, I'm yes. just talking about there's more um, uh, ghost, uh, ghosty type stories and, and you'll see more shows about this than you'll yeah. see about UFOs. Yeah, that's but true. I think that people accept UFOs more. Well, one of the things is like, it's yes, we put down recorders sometimes and get nothing and spend 12 hours at a place and, and find nothing. That's true. But lots of times that doesn't happen. Lots of times we find something. When we're podcasting, we find stuff. EVPs, whispers, noises. I know. But if you were a UFO hunting, imagine staring at the sky. Well, and that's what I was going to say is ghost hunters, you know, on, on uh, sci-fi back probably 12 years ago or so, they got the wild idea of, hey, we should do UFO hunters. They had the same logo and everything, except in, instead of saying ghost hunters, they said UFO hunters. That lasted one season because, you know, they were going going out and you know shooting cameras at the sky and was that a shooting star you know is that a satellite it wasn't as interesting on tv right. as the as the as going into a right. place that's known to be now it's a little is, more contained is it as rare as we think it is i don't know well yeah. there's also more places you can go hunt ghosts than you can i mean it, i get the idea i mean people are not going to view i mean it is different but you can go to a million different places that are haunted buildings. They're, yeah, it's you, contained. Yeah. Um, you've got a contained environment. We're here, and, you know, if you live here in Springfield uh, and you step out on your, on your, you know, depending on what part of town you live in, but you step out on your back deck to see the meteor shower that's, that's you know, that's going on right now, you're not going to see it. You can't see any stars out in my back, uh, no. if you step on my back deck at all, because there's too much light pollution. Do you remember in the, the, the New York blackout, the 80s, when New York yeah. blackout? Yes. Do you remember uh, mm-hmm. uh, what happened after that? No. Um, 911 was inundated with phone calls of people saying there's strange lights in the sky. 
They were seeing the Milky Way. They were seeing, oh. they were seeing their stars <laughs> for the first time stars. in their lives. <laughs> Because they lived in New York City, they didn't get to see that. Like, and we see the stars, but like, if it's pitch black, if you if you have no artificial light within a hundred miles, you really see the stars. That's why people right. go out in the middle of nowhere, yeah. Norway, to look at the Milky Way galaxy. You can it, faintly see Andromeda too. Well, you can. See, yeah, you, that's what I mean. You can actually see like the the galaxy. Like the, the darkest location in North America, I think, is in Utah. That's where a lot of like astronomers and there's an observatory, there's an observatory there. there. That's yeah. why. When I was a little kid, we would go out, or you remember. Out, out in your, I was going to say, out in your old yeah. stomping grounds is where you can and, see a lot And that's of, what yeah. I was just going to say, too, about the cemetery we go to. I mean, hell, we've got a better chance, a good a chance of seeing something in the sky as we do, you know. Yeah, because there's nothing out there. There's no light There's pollution. no light pollution at all. Chances are when, I mean, I sky watched all the time when I lived out in the country. It was really good really good because we were pretty far away from the city and it was a tiny city anyway so it didn't have much light pollution but yeah we would see obviously what were satellites moving at a very slow steady pace across the sky you'd see the iss you could track the iss on your phone right. and you could see you know meteorites but what we saw that video you sent was none of that stuff well it wasn't a drone either i can tell you that we have a, there's one one guy in I our know. town who flies a drone I know. I know what it looks like it's got identifying lights on it our ufo also just disappeared too it also just disappeared what we saw we were on our back deck and i saw this little faint like reddish orangey light just kind of slowly moving around like a figure eight almost well that right there would scream drone right you well, would think drone it was moving real slow so i thought as oh, opposed he, to like a plane a yeah, plane's right. like thought, well, he must be flying his drone but it was also midnight so who flies a drone at midnight see i've never seen a ufo but i've never seen one i, I got bobby and we both went out to the back deck i have video of it and it was a little closer and it was just slowly moving across the tree line and it was flashing. I remember because you sent a video and then you sent a video. One of the videos I couldn't see anything on and the other one I could see it very clearly. And I don't remember whose was whose. Are you sure it wasn't the Lifeline Chopper or something? Oh, yeah, it, it wasn't anything somewhere? like that. Yeah, oh, no positive. Way. Yeah, it wasn't moving like... Uh, no, it was very erratically movement. Like it, either, again, like a drone. It can't be a plane because they're not going to do the figure eight pattern like that. Unless and something's it would go wrong, like, uh, it would like, go like down and up, like stereotypical like UFO movement, like it very was erratic, and all over the place. Yeah, as far as I know, drones can't move that fast. That fa yeah, the speed would would dis dis disqualify drone because it was moving too quick. Unless there were you know two, I mean that wouldn't make any sense. And yeah, I I was recording it with an iPhone, but I had it I had the bottom of the iPhone steadied on the on the deck handrail and I was holding it like this uh, vertically with my, my hand stabilizing mm. it. Yeah. And I remember when you look so, at the video, your first inclination would be to think that it was the camera the shape me shaking, shaking. Yeah. Yeah. It, Cause I did zoom it in quite a bit, but it's a black sky. It's a light against a black sky. I can't prove anything. Right. So yeah, that was a good, it was a good video. And that was, I don't remember how long ago, a couple years ago. Um, been a couple years. I don't know. I've never, I've never seen, um, as much as I've been out at night, uh, I've seen shooting stars, I've seen planes, never seen a UFO. Well, it was easy to see it because satellites move in the same way, and this was not moving like any if of the you, other stuff. If you look at, like, the UFO sighting, like a map of, like, the sightings, because uh, there's numerous websites to track these things. Uh, I forgot what the best one's called, the we, biggest one. We but get if quite you, a few. If yeah, you, I know. If you look at it, you do. Like, the Midwest gets their fair share, but the majority... UFO sightings are near a coast or in the ocean. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually, I'm glad you brought that up because there's a really good show on Travel Channel called UFO Witness. And the new episode, the newest episode of UFO Witness takes place here in Springfield. Um, they've got all, they've got videos there that someone captured, you know, from here in, here in town. And you can, um, you can look that show up and find it. Very, it's the latest episode. Very recently. Uh, and every now and then it hits one of our local news either KY3 or Color 10. I of, remember of, that of More night, of like a mass sighting thing. One of you texted... The, Look out your back door up in the west sky. Something's three, up there. One like, of you texted three lights moving over Springfield on the news. Yeah. yeah I don't man. remember who it was. I think was me. one of us, because I remember that happening. I, and yeah, and I went out back and we did see three lights it was just me and my this, son it was just this dinky little k like i think maybe a ky3 article but like it didn't have any comments like nobody looked at it <laughs> but a lot of times this will um people will get on facebook and comment about stuff yeah like that. 
Well, that's where the real experts of the world live. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what I was going to say is a lot. That's where of, I get my medical advice. I, <laughs> a lot of times, it, I said this a couple podcasts ago, ghost footage that I see on the internet, I don't even usually look at it. Yeah, and we've, um, we've talked about that before too. Well, it's like, usually you know, dog shit. So I is. know, and you have to consider your source. That's why whenever you know nowadays, whenever you know it's a new declassified video, hell yeah, I'm going to watch that because there's going to be some. I, I sincerely urge anybody who's never fully heard that Nimitz encounter to with Commander I keep saying his name wrong is David it Fervor David Fravor. Fravor. man that is the craziest story and here's uh, the story of what they were investigating here in Springfield Missouri this is an article from a classic rock station in Dallas I don't even remember seeing this story locally UFO spotted over Springfield Missouri looks like a pulsating cube they were talking about this phenomena they've had lately where especially here in the Midwest they've had these cubes it's the Borg spotted. Tyler <laughs> the Borg's coming and but the the guy who lives here in Springfield play, showed his video, and it is. It's like a shiny cube, a perfect shiny metal cube just slowly spinning. Like the Borg. That's what I said just yeah. now. It really is like yeah, the Borg. it's the Borg cubes. Uh, and they actually, yeah, they actually mentioned that on the show, too, because Ben Hansen is the, um, the main guy, and he's a former FBI agent. He's the main investigator on the show UFO Witness. But like I said, this is a classic rock station in Dallas, Texas that's running this. And here's the video that's running this, uh, this news story. And I never, and I'm not saying they didn't, but I don't remember seeing this story at all. It was October 18th of 2021, just last year. Just last year. I don't remember any. But then after that, cited on Glenstone Avenue in Springfield, Missouri, October 18th 2021 but then since then they've they've videoed the pulsating cube in columbia kansas city st louis and many areas in between even over into kansas but it was a, it was a pretty compelling video that was taken of this this perfect cube rotating on its own axis just up, apparently above glenstone street here in springfield missouri so i don't know but the show i'm talking about it's called ufo witness it's on travel channel if you have a fire stick or if you have you know hulu live or whatever you can pull it up and watch it it's the latest episode i believe there may be an episode you know out now since then but it's the latest one that i watched it was a new episode when i watched it but it was uh it was pretty cool i never uh i'd, I'd never seen that video you know and we live right here so i don't know the, the main the main idea of their their episode was that there's different shaped ufos in different parts of the country and they focused this time on the cube ufo which they've they've captured you know here and several spots over you know areas around us here i mean you guys tend to i i love watching the ufo stuff but you guys you know, I like watching the, the UFO stuff where they show, you know, videos that people have captured. You guys like to look at, and I do too, and are more up to date on the uh, declassified stuff that comes straight out of the government. So I don't really have a lot of in-depth knowledge. I find it incredibly interesting to think about and to, uh, to look at. But in, I, I don't see us in the future switching over to uh, No, I, I don't UFOs. think we're going to be Midwest. <laughs> Unless, it's kind of like you said before, if we're ever out you know, on an investigation outside and Bigfoot comes tearing out of the, out of the forest, guess what? Yeah. We're Bigfoot hunters now. Yeah. <laughs> so if you, that... you guys can hunt Bigfoot all you want. <laughs> I'll be staying home. <laughs> so if that happens, you know, if we're at this cemetery and we see, you know, if we see, you know, E.T.'s, uh, uh, spaceship come overhead. And, Wouldn't it be cool if it, if the UFO landed and Bigfoot got out? <laughs> actually, actually, you know what? It'd be what? really confusing if a UFO landed, Bigfoot got out, and a ghost walked in. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. That'd be the trifecta. Uh, but actually, there are stories about uh, correlation between UFO sightings and Bigfoot sightings, but I'm not going to go there in a million years. Please don't. It's because he's an alien. He's a Wookiee. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, can't, he crashed here, I mean, and his look, ship I mean, was you broken. You look at that picture from earlier, and then you think that Bigfoot couldn't come out of that? Bigfoot could come out of the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> It does look like a front view of the Millennium Falcon, that Calvine Maybe UFO. Maybe that's that where George about. Lucas got the whole idea. But it would still have the escape pod. I don't have any more UFO knowledge to share. I find them fascinating, interesting. I mean, I can put the picture up on our website that we were talking about here, but that's about... It's going to I mean, be all, honestly, it's going to be all subjective. If I'm, if I'm being completely honest, like um, I might catch some flack for this, considering my company, but like I, I, f I find UFOs, in my opinion, like to be like very like at the top of my list. Like they're they're fascinating to me. Yeah, they are to me too. I love watching um, UFO stuff. I like talking about it more than ghosts, honestly. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I can't say I don't know as much about it because I don't know that much. I don't about know it. as much about it it's because I don't. I mean, there is no like there's. There's not much to There's know. There's no school of knowledge there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just it's just the unknown. It's just the thought of it. It's like a thought experiment cuz yeah. you then you immediately have to go to like well what is it? Um, we're pretty darn sure the United States military is pretty darn sure that it's not a it's not some these things can't be in other country. They've like, specifically said uh, yeah. what did they say other 
the, the other world or the world that the keeps word. being yeah. said and that that's the thing, the thing they, that's the thing like keeps circulating is not of this world yeah mm-hmm. that's what it was yeah of I, non-terrestrial origin yes, is yes what they not of this world isn't that is, creepy is, which that, when you hear yeah. a government use the term non-terrestrial origin it's like holy shit yeah yeah they just said alien and didn't yes. say alien and then right. that starts giving credibility to other things i've seen over the years i mean i've seen I've seen, I mean, I guess you could call them conspiracy theories because they would be, but like uh, about Truman meeting, you know, with uh, alien, you know. You see, that's the thing, uh, like conspiracy, yeah. you'd say conspiracy theory, but like just if we were, if we were t- sitting at a table talking about this in the 40s, right. talking about UFOs, we're conspiracy theorists. Yes. But now, like it's, you can't deny that it exists. Well, you've yeah, got, I mean. You've got a commander of a battleship They've created out. an environment where they've said these things didn't exist for, so it would be like now if they came out and said, oh. There actually was a shooter on well, the grassy why, knoll. You that's know, why I, was, I mean, I was telling John earlier when we first started, like, um, like the implication of this when you say non-terrestrial origin, that changes the world. Everything, yes. Uh, uh, pilots aren't superhuman, but they're very, very good at right. what they do. Sure. And now, if a neurosurgeon says he found cancer in my brain, I'm not going to look at him and say, "Nah, you didn't." Right. But no, it, you didn't. It was a, it was it was a, swamp gas. It's a highly t- <laughs> if a highly trained, decorated military air. Craft pilot says he saw something he's never seen before. Look, if the yeah. government trusts him to fly a ten billion dollar plane <laughs> around in the and sky, you're getting multiple ones of these guys with video to accompany them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the the military pilots are way up there. I even consider commercial pilots. You know, they're I mean, they know yeah. more about stuff that's up there than. Oh Kurt, my god, and we could talk about that. UFO we could, yeah, we could talk about commercial pilots again for hours because the amount of sightings from them yes. since like the forties, fifties has just went through the roof. And one of my favorite back then you didn't talk. You you would be like you're, you're the crazy guy. You're the crazy. pilot. They hang little green aliens in your locker. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you get it ostracized big time. But the amount of uh, UFO claims from commercial airline pilots are very, very high. And they've got some really good stories to tell and, and pictures they've even taken. It just makes you wonder, because I've always said that I think that paranormal stuff is more common than people think. I think that UFOs are more common than people think. Like, Yeah, yeah I do too. Because when you've um, got pilots saying it left and right... Like you got, you've got battleships trying to lock on to like these things. It's got to happen more. Often I than saw we know. the radar. Yeah, I saw that. I, I it was from one of the fighter jets. They were trying to lock on to one of those Tic Tacs, and it, as soon as they would lock on, it was gone, and then it would pop up again, and then they would lock on, and it was gone. Yeah, um, and some actively scramble like and block the locking too. Which yeah. I, I don't remember if I said it on air, but like if you do that it's an act of war. You can't do that. Right. Like you're not supposed to be able to do that. Right. If you're trying to lock onto me, I'm going to scramble with you. <laughs> just to, just right. To let you know in Right. Advance. But like, it's, it's against like, <laughs> if you normally like, there'd be like communication, you know, like, Hey, like you're in our airspace. Yes. Like respond. there's, there's like, a certain there's protocol. Protocol. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, my protocol would be don't lock onto me. Yeah. <laughs> The first, pro- yeah, the first protocol is scramble, and then they, you know, they gather and circle, and then they, you know, the last line of defense is. I, I'm sure there's steps in between, but they do lock on. And if you don't skedaddle at that point, you're going to. I think rubble. it's more just to like it. They, that doesn't mean they were going to shoot it down. You just want that, that threat. Yeah, there's like the tone. Yep. you know that. So I don't know. It's crazy, man. Good stuff. Uh, I can put that picture up on the website mwghosthunters.com. And we'll be back soon with another episode of Midwest Ghost Hunters Dark Matter Podcast. Ooh.